These are decks that I think could be good for new or returning Yu-Gi-Oh players in 2023. Ideally what I was looking for was a deck that had an easy-ish combo and game plan. I wanted it to be able to be built on a budget at least to start with and it had to be powerful enough to win games occasionally since you don't want to be always losing. For number 5 I have Gate Guardian. Pretty much all of the Gate Guardian cards got printed in Maze of Memories making it very affordable. None of the main Gate Guardian cards are currently over a dollar though there are some consistency cards that will be more expensive. The Gate Guardian boss monsters all require a combination of Suijin, Kazujin, and or Senga of the Thunder. The ones that need two have to banish from the field and the biggest one that needs three can banish from the hand, field, or grave. Luckily there are multiple ways to easily get the names you need onto the field. You also get some decent negations in the form of Gate Guardian of Wind and Water which allows you to negate spells and traps twice per turn. And Gate Guardian combined can negate cards that target your cards which is very helpful for protection. Combined with the ability of the boss monsters to float into one of their materials it gives a decent chance for Gate Guardian to win. At number 4 I put Spring Ends. While some of the Spring Ends exceed monsters are a little more expensive, many of their cards are easily less than a dollar, helping to be fairly budget friendly. The main combo with Spring Ends starts with Spring Ends Merrymaker. You can easily get to it with the field spell by discarding a Spring Ends card. After you get Merrymaker you can rank up into Gigantic Sargus which can search for any of your Spring Ends cards. While the main deck monsters are not the most powerful, they make up for it with their spells. Their field spell easily gets out Exceed monsters. Spring Ends Watch can add the field spell, or if you have the field spell, you get to add a monster and send one to the grave. The newest spell, Tally Ho Spring Ends, also gets to add a monster, but can also special summon up to three Spring Ends from hand or grave by detaching Exceed materials. These spells help set up a board that can interrupt the opponent. Captain Sargus can destroy a card by detaching an Exceed material that can be simply paired with a strong rank 4 of your choosing to help slow down the opponent. For number 3 I have Shark. Over the last little bit Shark has got some decent reprints that helps to bring the overall cost of the deck down. The combos for Shark is pretty easy as long as you have two level 4 water monsters on the board you are able to go into a couple of pretty good Exceed monsters. Stealth Kraken is very good being able to destroy a monster in the main phase and deal damage along with that effect. Since it makes all monsters on the field water it also goes very well with Gozen Match which can lock out your opponent from summoning monsters unless they are water. Anything that you think Kraken might not be able to stop you have totally awesome which can negate about almost anything. Once per turn by sending an aqua you control to the graveyard. You have Bahamut Shark that can easily summon totally awesome out you can Definitely set up a board that has multiple interruptions that will stop the opponent. At number 2 I have put Fluandries. With reprints from the 2022 Megatons, only Fluandries and the Advent of Adventure is above the dollar mark currently, making it very affordable besides the super consistency card, Pot of Prosperity. The deck revolves around normal summoning lot, so you will almost never be special summoning, which means you don't have to worry about some of the summoning mechanics. Also, Pot of Duality is a great consistency card that doesn't let you special summon, which is something you don't care about. It does have a fairly linear game plan of at least at the beginning of the game. You start with little birds and you keep normal summoning them till you can get into some of your powerful tribute monsters. What people will normally tribute for is Empen to search your spells and traps, Rise of the Mega Monarch to remove problematic cards, or Myth Valley Apex Avian to negate cards. Snell is also good to be able to flip opponent's monsters face down. All of these help to control the board and potentially win the game. And at number 1 I currently have Trap Tricks. Many of the cards you will need can easily be found in their structure deck Beware of Trap Tricks, making it fairly affordable to get. A lot of what the deck tries to do revolves around Trap Tricks Sarah. It can special summon Trap Tricks monsters and set trapped whole cards from the deck, getting a lot of advantage very quickly. It also only requires one Trap Tricks monster to make. Luckily Trap Tricks has some great normal summons before going into Sarah. Romelio adds you a whole tra normal trap. Pudica adds you the Trap Tricks field spell. And Mantis adds a Trap Tricks monster. They all help to gain more cards to use. 
Another part that helps to make trap tricks fairly straightforward is the traps. When they try to play, you have a trap to get rid of it. These are the 5 decks that I think would be good for newer returning Yu-Gi-Oh players. Let me know other decks that you think might be good. Thanks for watching.